Austin. We know he is fabulous. Please welcome the very talented Hal Sparks, everybody. I am a magician, actually. I, I'm a trained magician. I actually, this is a true story. Um, but I, and, and by the way, this, uh, just for, in deference to you, right out of the gate, I want to, um, <laughs> I want to, this joke's just for you. This is, uh, this is my impersonation of sex before 1993. It's <laughs> just a way to age the crowd. It's a late show. What are you oh knowing about? You're the one out in a pandemic in the dark. <laughs> and for a 10 o'clock show. Oh my lord. Oh my goodness. These jokes horrify me. Well, it's Halloween. It should. Yeah, I'm uh you know it's 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 strange um the the pandemic of course is uh brought back some of the original Halloween. I appreciate that. That's very, very Charlie Brown kind of a <laughs> Halloween mask, you know. Pumpkins, bats, ghosts, and, and that's just it. And orange, the general color, which is really the most frightening part, honestly. The color orange, quite frankly, ugh. Few things are more frightening, you know what I mean? It doesn't go with anything. Nobody can wear it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it keeps you from getting shot occasionally. That's the uh, only thing you say about orange. Not all the time, obviously. It's a shame. It only works in the sticks when you're surrounded by drunk rednecks who think you're a deer. Orange will not save you on the street. It'll just help people find you as you're running. Um, I, you know, I, I appreciate the, the holiday. Like, obviously, ghosts used to have a lot more weight in the world. You know what I mean? As far as scary. Like, people used to be afraid of ghosts. Fuck, this house is haunted. Someone died here. But we've had these, like, buildings have been around for so fucking long, somebody's died everywhere. You know what I mean? It used to be like, that's the house where that person died. Like, fucking every, somebody's croaked in every house here. I mean, they're not all murders, but there was a, definitely a walk-in like, Grandma! You know what I mean? Like, in every building, every apartment, you know. And real estate's so fucking expensive, I, we're all looking for the murder house. Like, you watch, I show you, 16 people were found in the crawl space of this place. The, the neighbors said the stench bothered them, but they never really said anything or whatever. The, the gruesome scene, people will be scarred for life. Is it on the market yet? Is there a, do, who's the realtor? Why is there not a sign in the yard of this fucking monstrosity right now? Is Gacy's house on the market right now? I can, I'm just saying, I know there's storage. Um, I was always confused at the concept of, of ghosts in general. Like, the, they're just hanging around. <laughs> All right, okay. And I get, I, the only ghosts I actually get are the ghosts of vengeance. You know what I mean? Like, they were murdered, and the person got away with it. They're still working at the country store, you know what I mean? They're still selling scoops full of oatmeal to people in the old western town, you know? <laughs> he killed me! You know, like, that makes sense in an old western kind of a way. I don't get it what the fuck the other ones are here for. Just to make you think you saw something? Get a cat! <laughs> what was that? Oh, it's the cat. Never mind. Fuck it. <laughs> We, I lived in a haunted house when I was, uh, when I was growing up. Two of them. Fuck, we had, a, uh, like, we had ghosts in a couple of different houses. One of them, uh, the, and I grew up in Peaks Mill, Kentucky. And the house we were in um, was a, uh, a, the main room was a, was a log cabin. The rest of the house had been built onto it, but it was originally a log cabin. And it was a church during the Civil War for some of the soldiers that fought. But because Kentucky was a divided state, they didn't give these guys space to bury, they didn't give them a cemetery next to the church. They just said that you got the church, what, uh, the only holy ground is underneath. So they buried the fucking dead people under the goddamn church, so, which was our house. So I'm, yeah. Um, and you'd think, well, that's something you'd know about. That's something that's gotta be, a, the, the realtor would walk you through, like, this is good, there's two bathrooms, room if you wanna break this out or whatever. Of course, lots of dead people underneath. Um, kinda like a, kinda like a, it's like a cross between poltergeist and a cracker barrel. It's fabulous, you know. 
Nope, didn't mention it. Didn't fucking mention it. And I had a habit as a child of, uh, of two things. One, crawling under everything and jumping off of everything. These were my two things. Didn't have a television until I was 15 years old, lived out in the sticks. So you gotta amuse yourself. And I would amuse myself by jumping off of shit or crawling under shit. And on this particular day, I was crawling under shit and I went under the porch and the house was under there, and I, you know, like under, past the porch, there was an area where you could get under the house, you know. And um, I, I'm, you know, I'm into spiders and snakes and shit like that. It doesn't scare me. I like confined spaces. I've always, you know. You know. And, uh, and I'm crawling around under there, and I find a little bone under there, which I'm sure I thought was a cow bone. And my mom's a nurse, so I bring it out, and I was like, look, what I found under the house. And she's like, that's a little boy. And, um... True story. So the uh, way they tell everybody, call the coroner comes out, and they're like, what the fuck is this? And you're like, Ever, and, and my dad felt bad for him because he got the full BTK when he came home. You know what I mean? He was like, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, BTK killer was a serial killer for years or whatever, but his family didn't know. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> they didn't know. What's that smell, Dad? I don't know. It's a, that's not a fart. That's a, all right. Um... That's a corpse. Um, so BT, it like, it, uh, they were like, uh, Mr. Sparks, where have you uh, been lately or whatever? Like, this is a, bo this bone's old. I didn't, obviously, I was, this was killed before I was born. So they dug onto the house, found uh, like 16 bodies. And they excavated them and then they buried them in the main cemetery in town, gave them kind of a proper burial, but that's where they came from or whatever. So we had to go live in an apartment building <laughs> for two years while they excavated the shit and moved all this stuff out and I had a television set and it was awesome. Thank you 19 dead people for, it was the first time I ever got to play ColecoVision at my friend's house. Anyway, so, dead, but my sister and I repeatedly, apparently when I was very young, told my mother that we saw apparitions in the house, right? And that was the whole thing. Like we would sit in the living room and we would see this kind of messy light fog. This is a true story. Stick with me. This, it, like, I, I don't write anything. This is my show. You know, buckle in. This is fucking true. And so, I know I was going to tell this guy to you guys when I came up here. It's just, you deserve it. It's, this is all because of her mask. Anyway, so, I'm just saying, be careful when you go out. Get your mask game in order. I know you don't, you didn't know how to do it at first. Now you're matching. It's lovely. Look at the pumpkins. And she's got her, you, you got branded already. You have a sponsor. That's fantastic. You know, she got some, like, racing car thing, like a NASCAR patch. It's amazing. You know what I mean? In the beginning, we were all just duct taping tampons to our face, and we're like, I don't know, go outside, I don't want to die, wearing diapers and looking through the holes. Now get your mask game in order. So anyway, so we're sitting in the dining room table, and we would see this thing, and it would go through the middle of the back wall. We would always see this in the, in the, in the kitchen area and stuff, and it would go through this wall. Well, later on, we would tear down the wall, and there was a door there. We didn't know there was a door there. Made sense door had been there the whole time and these ghosts were like and it was nice because these were remodeling ghosts <laughs> these were the spirits of you could expand this area it'd be lovely whatever like, like we had we had fl that's why they were there they weren't telling us like my body is here move me they had already, like they were under the house they were they were just going through their shit they're just like i gotta go out in the yard I, like what are you doing what are you going to do when you haunt people? When you die and you come back and you're going to haunt people, what are you going to do? I think I'll mill around the kitchen, move some dishes. <laughs> Fuck off. Get a job, ghost. <laughs> Flick some bottle caps. I work for a living. Make my life interesting. The other instance was my father worked, he's an architect, worked for the state of Kentucky, re, uh, remodeling buildings. He's an expert in, in period architecture. And so uh, the Kentucky State Library that's in Frankfort, Kentucky, to this day, is a wooden building because it was originally that. And so when they remodeled it, they did it to spec. They got the same kind of wood. They treated the wood. They patched it. And, they, and these buildings were built with square nails, which no one makes anymore. So my dad and I sat in the backyard with a cast making square nails for like a week and a half when I was like 11. It, you know, that kind of shit. It was cool. Um, but while he was working on this project, uh, initially, uh, and it took him years to do it, I was uh, six years old, and I went to work with him one day, and he brings me into the building, and then I'm just fucking gone, which is not weird. You know how everybody's like, you gotta watch it with kids. Pfft, 
fucking turn around, they're gone, right? You know, and um, and like most of the time, they just walked in the other room. I would be in the parking lot um, trying to kiss fenders, you know, like I was I was one of those kids who was like, "Where's Hal?" It's probably on the roof <laughs> with a with a with a t- tablecloth, convinced he can fly. Like that was the kind of shit I would do. Anyways, they couldn't find me, and they're like, Where, "Where's where the fuck's Hal?" or whatever, and they're like. And they looked, they went all over the place, they went into this one room and they were looking for me and stuff. And then they finally found me and I was sitting in a room by myself on a chair and they said, uh, what have you been doing? And I went, I was talking to the lady. No. Oh yeah. He was talking to the lady. Like, who was she? She's an old lady. Just I talked to the old lady. Turns out the old lady was an apparition that people would talk about in this building that they talked about for years. She was the librarian who ran the place for a while. And she, after she died, she haunted the place and occasionally people would see her staring out the window. So my dad continued the project. They worked on it for a little while. After they did this thing, they, you know, they, they were doing some construction and stuff in the backyard. They dredged up this thing and they found the body of a newborn. And apparently this woman had had a baby and it passed away and she'd had it with some dude who was, you know, <laughs> she was it, like as they did back in the day. And so she hid it and she buried it in the backyard. Apparently she was just looking out the window at it all the time. And then they gave it a f- an official burial. This is true. It's in Kentucky. You, you talk about Kentucky. Go down there and check it out. And uh, she, they, she, they never saw her again. Because she, she wouldn't worry about it. Now she could go get laid. And she just felt like, I guess she met somebody. <laughs> Ghost Tinder. <laughs> they have uh, sex ghosts. That's the other story that amazes the fuck out of me. <laughs> Women often will tell these stories. In olden times, a spirit visited me in the night. Yeah, it was his truck parked in the fucking driveway, you <laughs> cheating bastard. <laughs> now, I don't know anybody's like, uh, scared of ghosts anymore. Like, that's just not something we do. Now, they're scary as shit, don't get me wrong, you know what I mean? But I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about uh, I'm, uh, uh, spirits roaming the earth in physical form. <laughs> People are fucking scary. <laughs> I've decided to go as an anti-masker for Halloween, save myself some money. Um, it's a shitty time to try and sell masks right now, you know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? I'm doing one of those Halloween pop-up stores. How's it doing? Nobody wants a fucking mask right now. Like, people, I'm like, hey, you want to buy some masks? Somebody punched me in the fucking face. I'm like, I'm just, I don't mean <laughs> kind of a mask. I like, uh, I love horror movies. I'm, I'm a big fan. But it's harder and harder to like scare me. Any, like we were asking, um, like backstage, we were talking all of us earlier, um, and asking Barry, like, what's their favorite horror movie? Yeah. Like, and, and and I got three people saying the fucking Omen. Oh. Omen. Look. Oh, that was with Damien. Yeah, Damien Omen. Yeah, the first one. You know what I mean? With the kid. Yeah, yeah. Not when he's like a teenager. They're all painting, you know, whatever. They never did that one. You know, like the second movie would have been like, fuck you, dad. I don't know. Maybe I want to be a messiah. I don't know. Like, it, they would never show, like, Damien in the teenage years helping old ladies across the street, this rebelling against Satan, you know? <laughs> and then Sam Neill from Jurassic Park played him in the third one. And I'm like, I like that guy. This is terrible. The little kid with the Hitler fucking hairdo. You know what I mean? At least it's kind of like... A bunch of dogs ripping a priest apart, you know? Um, they didn't show him in his teenage years where his hair had fallen over his eye and he was like, I don't know, fuck it, you know? I'm like, fuck you, I don't know. The cure's here this weekend. I don't feel like Sataning. <laughs> Frankenstein, that's a that's a monster that's kind of gotten past its time. You know what I mean? 
Those are the monsters of, of yore. When, when medical science, that's, that's the original vaccine panic. That's what anti-vaxxers are now with the people who are like, you can't sew parts onto someone. You put a kidney in somebody's body. It's got the spirit of that other person. What if you give me the kidneys of a killer, right? How'd the operation go? Good, I've been peeing, it's great, fantastic, or whatever, middle of the night, murder. They gave me the kidneys of a killer. 1950s horror fucking film or whatever. He pees his victims to death or whatever. They Look at that stream. Uh, but Frankenstein was really about the idea that, you know, maybe we would find out that because they, they're always afraid that, you know, what if I lost a hand? You could sew a hand on me. Maybe you get a better, but what happens if that hand wakes up in the middle of the night? They were always afraid of that. They were never afraid of like, you know, like, I was always confused by the stranger as, uh, as a kid, you know what I mean? Like, my, my buddies would always tell you about the stranger. If you don't know, ladies, if you don't know what the stranger is, the stranger allegedly is uh, you sit on your hand till it goes numb, and then uh, you masturbate, and it feels like someone else's hand. Is the idea, because you don't feel anything, because it's numb or whatever. Now, granted, it feels like a, a dead guy's hand. Um, <laughs> And if that's your thing, uh, that's fine. You know what I mean? It's, like, it's a victimless crime, um, quite frankly. But I've never been like, oh, hey, if only a corpse could give me a hand job, you know? What a fucking, what a Halloween movie that is, or whatever, you know? It's like, it's just really like, just uh, your sleep, full of candy. I don't know why I'm asleep in jeans. That didn't make any sense. <laughs> it roams the night, you know what I mean? Like, after it's done with you, it didn't get any pleasure out of it, so you're still asleep, and it's like... Just giving hand jobs to people in the neighborhood. Where's that? It's the only horror film that shows up in Pornhub search results. <laughs> the stranger. <laughs> can we pick which stranger it is? Just, can you at least put on some fake nails? Give me something. <laughs> they gave me the penis of a killer. <laughs> How do you do it like, all right, I'm not going there. This show is not thought out, so I don't think there's a safety zone where uh, he's gonna get to something that's okay. This just goes where it goes. And if you see it going somewhere, it's gonna keep going that way. We're all going together. <laughs> Lock the doors. <laughs> this is the carry of comedy shows. <laughs> oh my God, dick jokes just everywhere. The, Carrie was one of those movies where I was like, that's like a relatable fear. You know what I mean? Because I've every guy in here has had a woman that pissed at him. <laughs> like, if she could just think you on fire, you just fucked. Mm. Dirty pillows. They're called breasts, mama. Um... <laughs> I grew up around religious fanatics like that. They're fucking way scarier. You like run to a house of a known serial killer going, let me in, there's a televangelist out here. <laughs> what would be a, I mean, if you made a, a genuine horror film, you know, what would be genuine, like really scary, what would be a really scary monster these days, you know? You know, somebody like breathes on you, you know, like I. Uh, <laughs> for me, it would be, I mean, some, some things are just terrifying, you know, like somebody in front of you in line at the store who has a story to tell. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, oh God. Somebody who's 
angry in the line at Starbucks and wants you to join in their anger. You know, those people. Like, there's a long, it's obvious shit's going south. There's not enough people working. They are out of materials. They can't make the latte situation happen. And then there's, there's like five people in line and four of them are like, I get it. They're working very hard. There's a lot of shit going on. But there's one right in the middle of them going, what the fuck? Hey. This is I, unacceptable that we're, you know? And you're like, don't drag me into your shit, you psychopath. <laughs> Fuck off. I mobile ordered mine. I'm just standing here to block this woman from you so you don't punch her. You know? <laughs> it's fine. The people who want to drag you into their anger are, are the worst among us. You know what I mean? There's like serial killers and human traffickers, and then there's the, you know? <laughs> right? Come on! Dude, what is happening? She knows! What, I, I do not. I do not know. Where's that costume? <laughs> you know her, don't you? They come, that person comes into your fucking place of work all the fucking time. It's like, oh, like just the fucking... D it's just like... 24-7 at the DMV, you know what I mean? There's always somebody who's like, yeah, you do realize, like, the DMV is supposed to be fucked up, right? <laughs> Everybody always uses the DMV as, like, yeah. this example of society's fucked, and government can't do shit. You ever been to the DMV? <laughs> yeah, I'm amazed they don't shoot everyone. I, have you seen the fuckers who come into the DMV? I don't really have my registration, <laughs> but I have... I, know, I have a CVS receipt and my criminal record. Um, I'm bleeding from a flesh wound and I brought a friend who's uh, got a warrant and um, I just need to get new tags for a vehicle I haven't bought yet. You know, like, this is a fucking line of 27 fucking people there. And they're like, God damn, the line for the DMV is long. It's not long. The line is not long. It's got 30 people in it. That's not long. There's a lot of places you stand in a 30-person line. It's like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's just that everybody who's standing in line at the DMV is a fucking lunatic who doesn't know how to use the Internet, can't figure out their shit, doesn't know that they already got their tags and they were mailed to another address and whatever. It's not the fucking government that's the problem with the DMV. It's the fucking public. Now, if I could go as a, like the most horrifying costume on Halloween, I'd go as the public. <laughs> Just a bunch of people. Just like, this should be going differently. Why? Why? Why should it be going differently? Because I'm here. Who the fuck are you? I, I've been the per I have a receipt. <laughs> we were here last time, and it didn't take this long, right? Fuck off. It's like people are bitching about the supply chains. I don't even know what the fuck Christmas and gas and like, dude, motherfucker, the whole world was on a ventilator last year. Like, of course shit's gonna take a while to start back up. I, I have a receipt right here. I, last year, I bought, I, shut the fuck up. We just went through awful. Tap the fucking brakes. God damn. Entitled sons of bitches. Like, do you realize everybody in line in front of you has a dead relative or somebody that just kicked off or they've lost everything? A job, to, fucking, they had a job and the whole goddamn company went away. And then in front of them, same shit. And they don't know each other, so they can't turn around and go, "This is terrible. I don't really understand." It's like, like, like I'm just like. Today I was, okay, so I'm at fucking CVS today um, because I like going to the danger zone. Um, if there's a filthier place, <laughs> Beirut emergency room, but C CVS is like, oh, all right, this is basically where everybody who's waited to the last, fuck. oh, you want to get that or? That's, no, it's okay, it's okay, answer it, it's fine. It's good. It was an alarm. Oh, good. All right. I didn't realize Siri was set on, if he brings up CBS, go to the parking lot and wait for instructions. Um, you guys should be happy. I just, I just dis discovered a terrorist cell. Um, um, thank you.
Thank you. Yeah, it's never too late for physical comedy. I work for a living, you motherfuckers. Okay, so I'm at CVS, and it's a, it was a line. There was like eight people in it. And like, during the whole fucking pandemic, there's usually like two people. There'd be a couple, couple people milling around, pretending they don't have Rona, looking, for, looking at antihistamines. You know, and you're like, you're going to be dead in like three days. You're, fu you're you, I mean... <laughs> You're, you're literally lunging up shit like a tuberculosis. You, you seem like Doc Holliday, like... <laughs> like, see you on an old train in the Old West, you know, just coughing up a lung, just... The whole, the whole lung is just hanging out of their mouth like a booger, just like, waiting, like, filling with fluid as I sit there, you know. <laughs> it happens a couple times a day. <laughs> Do you have any Benadryl? Like, you know, like, I just need some gauze. <laughs> so I'm standing, like, most of the time, there's just a couple people milling around, a couple people there to get a shot or some shit, and then there's two people in line and one person who's working there because everybody was like, this is the nastiest, most disgusting fucking place. I'm leaving. And uh, today it was like eight people in the fucking line. And I was like, Jesus Christ, these are a lot of, these are a lot of sick motherfuckers. I don't know. I'm not even worried about COVID at this point. I'm like, this is, these must, they must have everything. This is like, I'm like looking at the line going, syphilis, gonorrhea, hepatitis, HIV. Like, <laughs> that person's mentally ill. I don't even know they have. Is there, like, I need some chlorophyll throat spray. Why? I have schizophrenia. Great, that'll work. Um, so I'm standing in line, and uh, two people, like, I'm used to... In the world, we've all experienced kind of one person who wants to like spill their beans to everybody, right? They want to just tell you a fucking story. Well, we had a love connection in this fucking line. One lady was standing there, true story, happened today. True, the lady's like, yeah, my son was gonna be a pilot. He's a pilot, he was gonna be a pilot for American Airlines, but they, they made you get the jab. And so he said no. And so now he's gonna, he's gonna work for Delta instead as a baggage handler. And I was like, what? As a baggage handler, I was gonna be a pilot, but I'm gonna be a baggage handler. So why would you just go do something else? Just bag groceries, why the fuck? I just need to be near airplanes, even if I can't do what I love, you know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna be a tire, like what the fuck? And then the, the dude talking to her, sweet enough guy, seemed very affable, nice enough guy, like he'd be friendly if you just met him on the street, but he was like, it's the 5G, man. It's the 5G, it's the, five, the day they turned the 5G on, everybody got sick. That's what did it. That's what drive everybody because the satellites going around the earth, there's so many satellites, it's making the sky hot. And you're like, Mother. And I, like, I, I, I have a real hard time not interjecting. I can't sit there and, all right, just let it pass. It's like, it's, you're not gonna fix this, man. This is like, it's like being a National Geographic photographer. The fucking, the jaguar is gonna get the fucking antelope. It's none of your goddamn business. Just sit there in the tree filming it. That's all you're there to do, whatever. But like, but the, it's so cute. I have to save it from the jaguar of misinformation. And, and I, like, I didn't, I was like, I, I, every time I was like, Fuck, I should, that, and literally, like, she went to, they had two people working. She went to the first counter, like, we were standing in our little distance line, which they were not paying attention to. They were, like, up in each other's grill, like, I know, right? I know. And she goes to the front line, and he goes to the one that's right here. And then she leaves first. She sells her shit, and so he's still at this one right here. And, uh, and as I'm walking by, I literally, all, I couldn't stop myself. It was like a tick. I just went, like, satellites don't heat the earth, dumbass. And I just, like... <laughs> The last, and he didn't hear it. He was just, it just went by or whatever. I think he's got, he had shit in his ears. Um, but he, he had some salve for that or something. But I, like, and, and I, look, I grew up surrounded by lunatics in Kentucky who think they know fucking everything and know nothing, right? I mean, it's, it, it is literally, you can, it, it, if you go to UK, in Kentucky to the uh, to college, there's actually a degree in like pretending you know shit, but being killed by the very thing you studied. Like, you know what I mean? There's like you can get a degree in accidentally shooting yourself with a gun you were cleaning. <laughs> Con 
vet graduation day. You don't throw your hat in the air, it flies off on its own. <laughs> um, but man, I like fucking people in. And here's the thing, it's not new. It's not new, right? We're, we've been, this, is, this isn't new st human stupid. This isn't brand, we've been this fucking dumb for a long time, so I'm okay with it. You know what I mean? If they'd invented stupid, if we'd been gliding along for 85 fucking years, and like, you know what? Nobody has done anything fucking stupid in like five decades. And then one of these assholes went, watch this. I, then I would be concerned. I almost feel like it was normal. I was like, uh, like happy to be back out in the oil. I'm like, oh my God, this is just like it was before we all went inside. Every, I, I went in, everyone was dumb, and now I come back out, everybody's still fucking dumb. It's like the year never happened. My worry is, is that we're gonna have these, uh, um, the people who died of COVID are gonna be haunting us. You know what I mean? The ghosts, the ghosts of the COVID dead, you know what I mean? <laughs> they won't go ooh because they have a tracheal issues due to the tube so the you know whatever. and they don't float through they're just all prone just... <sighs> and they uh and they haunt you via FaceTime. It's unique. It's very, it's very, it's very Korean horror film. <laughs> hey, you have to laugh at everything. Anything you don't laugh at has power over you. Period. End of story. That we live in fucking ridiculous times. The only thing is, and by the way, it, it, made even more ridiculous by the fact that we think it's terrible. I mean, it's bad. But it's not fucking terrible. Yeah. The, the Spanish flu, that was fucking terrible. You know why it was terrible? Because we had the same shit we have happening now and none of the science, yeah. none of it. Oh, you think there's dumbasses wandering around believing like horse paste will save you or whatever? <laughs> think, think about what people back then were trying. They were just fucking anything. I don't know, chicken feed. What, uh, I heard chicken shit works. Where, where'd you hear that? Whisper in the wind. I don't know. That's what fucking what. Eat your boots. Uh, that always works when we're hungry or whatever. I'm going to eat. The, what, are you, what are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm sniffing black powder. Why? <laughs> Leeches! You know what I mean? Like, which have value, by the way. One of the, one of the reasons why people have heart attacks related to these kind of diseases is because the blood thickens because of the body's immune response. And so leeching actually did have a point back then. I wouldn't recommend it now, because there's better ways of doing it. Just saying those people weren't as dumb as you thought. They were just operating with limited options. You know what I mean? After you think witchcraft is silly and you're like, eye of newt, leg of frog, or whatever the fuck. Believe me, people start getting sick around you from a mystery disease and you don't know what germs are yet because you're a primitive person, you're gonna boil every fucking thing in sight and sniff it and throw it in the sky and you're like, ask the guy with a bone in his nose. He seems to know some shit. Like, I don't, I have so much patience for old societies that made up shit Whatever, like they were so primitive. Like, mother, what would you do? <laughs> Fucking cast away? Wake up on an island going, oh shit, I got a rotten tooth and four coconuts. <laughs> we were all stupid. So I forgive people for being stupid now. Because we, th we think we're starting, it, like, we, we think we have institutional knowledge. We actually think right now, because a kid is born today, that they kind of know what happened in World War II. Kind of, right? I mean, you were born now. Like, I know you don't know how to read and speak. That's new, whatever. But you know what happened. You just can't say it yet or write it down. Right? And people, I mean, people, think about that. You actually sort of feel that way. You weren't aware of it until I brought it up. You're welcome. But you didn't know that you're like, they don't. They're just as fucking dumb as somebody who, like, as Moses' nephew. They don't fucking know anything. They might as well be like a, a cannibal tribe on an island when they're born. Kids are like, 
you know, t straight up tabula rasa. Now, I, which means blank slate for those of you that, you know, aren't as smart and long haired as I am, fucking. Um, but I, you know, so I, and I, I have a, I have a kid. He's he's ten and he's fucking amazing and he's terrific. But I'm very aware that he he didn't come in with a cheat sheet. You know what I mean? Like there's a bunch of stuff he's gonna go. Who the fuck was this Charles Manson dude? At one point, you know what I mean? He's gonna when he's 15. You know what the fuck is that whole helter skelter? Thing? Jesus Christ, that's fucking creepy as shit. What did they do? You're know, like I thought you knew this. You were born after it. You should. They didn't, there's not a, like, neo kind of a download you get that fills you in. The worst is when people are full, and then, like, that's kids, we feel that. Which means we run into full-grown adults and think they know shit. Because they haven't been hit by a car yet. Which is how we judge most people in their quality. Like, well, he can cross the street, so. Obviously, he knows that who won World War II and that the Holocaust really happened. Like, no, that's, that's strange. So you really believe the Holocaust didn't happen and you haven't been hit by a car yet. That's amazing to me. But then that's, where's the, isn't that the most horrifying person? Like the person that's that dumb. There's also bats on your thing, which I think is rude. Although COVID, maybe we were properly warned. We all thought it was cute. Vampires actually turn into COVID. That's, uh, oh, shit. That's right. So bad as, I mean, they are gnarly. You ever get a bat caught in your house? Anybody? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, the big thing is that they're going to get in your hair. Which, when I had short hair at the beginning of the pandemic, pandemic, I didn't give a shit. Right, you know? I was like, he'll bounce off or whatever. Now this, it's like, you're in. You're staying, you know. Why is that not a costume already? You know what I mean? Just like walk around with a bat cut in your hair. <laughs> ghosts, we, I've been, I'm basically doing your mask. So ghosts, you know, dear God, don't take your mask off. That's even more frightening. No offense, I'm just saying because of fear, you know. My big worry. Oh, look at it's the Grim Reaper in the corner. All right, sure. Well, I mean, that's how it should end. You know what I mean? He's there, he's got a job to do. One would think though the Grim Reaper would be the most beautiful of the angels in many ways because the job is already done. He only shows up when you die. So the hard part's over. What are you gonna do, scare me by looking like a skeleton? I'm fucking dead. Did you see how I died? I was, I was run over by a car while denying the Holocaust. You think I'm afraid of a, a, a skeleton in a drape gown? I love that he had a scythe, you know, so we know he started out as a farmer with the best of intentions. Just doing wheat. And there was a drought and everybody in town died and I was like, maybe I can kill them. And then I got a job and they moved me upstairs and now I reap souls. It's, uh, and there's, I mean, it's a job that never goes out of style, you know what I mean? And the best thing about it, no lips. Um, so I try to tell people, you know, the, the thing about the Grim Reaper is that he warns you about death. That's, he's, he, he's actually, the story of the Grim Reaper was not that he's the angel of death, but that he gives you one last chance. So he shows up like a skull and crossbones on, you know, on a, on a bottle of poison, you know, or on the box of Skinny and Sweet, um, if you're a nine to five fan. And, uh, your one last chance to avoid death is the Grim Reaper shows up. You see the ghost of him, and then you go, oh, shit. Hmm. I'm not having any of those cookies. I'm not having... I'm not taking the apple with the razor blade from the lady on the block who hates me being in her yard. I'm nine years old, and I want to live. Um... <laughs> Which is, by the way, the most ridiculous thing in the world. Like, my, I, I used to, my sister and I would, we, we would trick or treat, and everybody would, you know, that was, that was the big story at the time, was apples with razor blades in them. They're putting, they're putting razor blades in apples. <laughs> Why? To keep kids from eating razor blades? Because what, what are you going to eat in your fucking bag? Like, the apple? Like, you're going to put it in the thing I'm least likely to eat. Why don't you put it in a fucking potato while you're at it? Why don't you, why don't you just put an avocado in there with a bullet, and I'll just bite it raw and... 
she'll blow the back of my head off. An apple, really? It's fucking, uh, it's a goddamn candy holiday. And by the way, with, uh, with good reason, now we all know what the holidays are actually for. You know the mechanics of the holidays. Most of them are agrarian pagan holidays that we, you know, we, we have here, you know. You got, starts off really in the beginning of the year with Valentine's Day which if you know why we have Valentine's Day, when we have Valentine's Day, it says that's the last day you can fuck and still have a kid before winter. So it's a, yeah, so it's a fucking holiday. It's a fucking holiday. And um, that's why it's there. And that's why chocolate, because it was one of the original aphrodisiacs. It has a chemical in it that makes you think you're in love. Women used to only fuck guys they felt like they were in love with because it was a commitment kind of thing. And so it was basically the original date rape drug. It's a horrifying tradition. And um, roses, by the way, give off a vibe when you're around them that make you feel elated and happy, unlike under other flowers. So big, more flowers you could give them, the more, you know, dozen roses, that would do the trick. That would, it was like scientific experiments. I was 18, 11. She, no, she's, she's a little turned on with eight. Let's just go with a dozen, right? That was the easy way of doing it, right? So that's what, that's what those are like. Easter was the festival of Ishtar. That was when the women would find out that they were pregnant. That's why it's eggs and chocolate. She started to get miserable because she's pregnant. So you just feed her with you know, chocolate and that, the bunnies and, you know, <laughs> right, eggs. So there you go. And then, but the, but the fall holidays, which st really do start with Halloween, is the, it, it was like agrarian societies would, they would uh, take all the crops, eat them, eat all the beef that you had or whatever, the, the animals that you were going to slaughter before the end of the year. You'd eat all, you'd start prepping all that food. And a lot of the fruit, that was the last period you could candy the fruit before the fall would come. So it would, just before they got rotten, you would, you would candy them and then you would store them for the winter so you could have uh, that. And so what would happen is in these little villages, Women especially would take whatever the fruit was that that family particularly had, the orange slices, fucking cherries, whatever it was, they would candy them, put them in jars, and there would always be a little left over. There's a little more, whatever. So kids would go door to door, and they'd get the candied fruit door to door. That's where Halloween trick or treat came from. The problem is kids hop, hopped up on sugar, are little fucking ghouls, and <laughs> they'll, they get all sunken eyed because all the fucking sugar in this, and they look like fucking ghosts. And, the, and so the tradition came for trick or treat, you know, and these monsters would visit your house going, you better have some fucking cherries. I'm gonna slit somebody. And that's where that came from. That's literally the ghoul aspect, the sprites, the evil demons that would come that would take over the children. That was fucking sugar. It was sugar. Don't believe me? Give a kid some sugar and then stop giving the kid some sugar. He's a goddamn monster. That's where it comes from. It's all a fucking holiday for that reason. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving follows that up. That's the last day you can eat all the unpreserved vegetables and all the, like, the goose for the year or whatever it is. You can't, they, they fuckers didn't have refrigerators. You had to eat it. Fatten yourself the fuck up, man. So you just gotta stuff yourself one last meal before everything goes to rot, yeah. And that's why everybody, like we have all this shit, like pumpkin pie and stuff, which has tryptophan in it. The history of, of that holiday has always been like fatten up and sleep like a goddamn bear. And then, why is Christmas where it is? Jesus was arguably born in June, so why December 25th? Well, it's the lowest day where the sun is at its lowest and the days are, are getting longer and longer, there's less sunlight. But the, you know, but it's more, it's darker, it's depressing. So everybody's fucking bitter and sad and scared and you're running out of shit. Have a big fucking party. Give everybody presents. Have big fat guy who's still fat from Thanksgiving show up and give everybody gifts, cheer everybody the fuck up for the kids. So they don't, you know, everybody in the silly season. So they knew that, so they fixed that shit. The New Year's was like, all right, this, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's in this jar where the fruit was, but you just sip some of this, it's fucking, woo! You'd get drunk on all the fermented leftover shit. New Year's, that's what it was. New Year starts, you know, winter's just a couple more weeks. You can hunker down. That was a great fucking party. Got so late. We had a week. You know, New Year's is just for the adults. And then before you know it, <sighs> Valentine's Day. History of the world. These, these didn't happen by accident. 
These holidays did not happen by accident. They, we knew we had to keep people alive. People were depressed and fucking scared, and there were fucking wolves, and like, fucking, life sucked. It fucking sucked. The, the past, in general, sucked. All of it. Everything up till a half hour ago was complete shit. And if you don't believe me, but that, science has told us that according to quantum physics, time can bend, fold, rip. You can, you know, you can you know, like layer it with itself and all this, but it never does. You ever, had a, you ever had time do that with you? You ever had it layer or punch a hole through in a worm? You never have. You know why? Time always moves linear, forward, all the time. And I think that's because with every tick of the clock, time is going, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that, fuck that, bullshit, no way, goodbye, thank you, nope, nope, nope. That's why I like aging. I'm 52 years old. That's right. 52. Very excited about the idea. Looking forward to uh, 80. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be fucking 80. And I, here's the thing. I love turning 50 when it happened because my intellect had always been 75. I'd always been an old fucker, even when I was younger. But no one listened to me because I was a young idiot in their eyes. And now I look like a gentleman. Um, I'll end on this because we're running out of time. You guys have been wonderful. I have, uh, I started out the pandemic with short hair. I did. And then I let, yeah, just really, you did too? Yeah. It's good. In the front, <laughs> like, and then, yeah. I'm glad you cleaned it up. Uh, I mean, there's two ways to go, you know, like all or nothing. I think that's wise, you know what I mean? The best thing about you is you can just like, carry some Vaseline in your pocket, and anytime you get in a fight, just like that, nobody can lay a glove on you. God damn it, get him! Weak, you know, huh? Nah, it's too tight. You, have to grow, you, have to, you need to grow a big ZZ top for that to give you any full, you know. But I, you know, I started like, Blow, I basically blew it off. I'm like, fuck it. I'll just grow it out a little bit. And then after a while, it was like, uh, yeah. it just had a fucking energy. You know what I mean? And then, and then it got to the point where it was like a do. And now it's got its own personality, right? And I'm, I'm just all in. I'm just fucking, I'm just going to keep, it's going to be down to here. You know why? You know why? Because we're almost through this. We really are. We're, uh, uh, my guess is February masks will be a relative thing of the past unless you have a concern. We'll get through the holiday season without a big spike and the you know, herd immunity mixed with people getting uh, vaccinated. That'll, that'll move us through it and we'll feel like, okay, we're getting back to some semblance of society. But just in case we don't uh, and things take a, a, a huge shit and we go backwards in a really bad way because I know that you know that uh, say, for example, H5N1, the uh, bird flu currently, the new strain or whatever is making, you know, uh, people sick in, in China right now. It's like 64 cases and spreading through three provinces. And if the Chinese government says 64, that's 64,000. And, um, and uh, we know this, that's fine. And, uh, and, you know, there's any number of other problems in the world that could go, you know, because the supply chain's fucked up and, you know, it could be, oh, whatever. Oil could, there's lots. There's always something, there's always something. So I have just decided to, to always be dressed for the end of the world. So how would you roam the earth when it's all done? Mad Max, Book of Eli. You know what I mean? Like, it's all dusty. The future is dusty. We know this. Sandstorms for no fucking reason. I got a long black leather coat, you know, for protection and fear. I have a walking stick that's eight feet tall, doubles as a weapon. Um, I have a, a necklace with one bullet on it that will magically fit whatever gun I stumble upon in an emergency. And I've uh, decided that if the world ends, I'm going to speak with an Australian accent going forward because there is no better accent for the end of the world than speaking with an Australian accent. Because on the one hand, it's tough. It sounds fucking like you could... Like you could mouth fuck a crocodile and walk away. I'm not afraid, you know? Sounds slightly badass. But at the same time, a little friendly. 
Yeah, it could kill you. He could come in and have a beer. Sit down. It's all right. We're having kangaroo. It's a little tough, but what do you expect? We didn't shoot it. That'd be, uh, we only got one bullet. Stepped on a landmine. A little chewy. Um, but I'm, <laughs> you kid, not the Australian accent's too much for you. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> see, this is the beauty of life. Ah! No, you can totally take it. It's you and me. <laughs> this is the part where you say, ain't we a pair, raggedy man? Right? <laughs> She runs Barter Town. You don't know this by now? We don't need another hero! All right. Um, <laughs> you, gotta, you have to use an Australian accent for the end of the world. You can't use a British accent. Because a British accent is just too proper for things when the world has gone down. You, that's, the, that's the accent you use when we're rebuilding, you know? We're putting things back together, if you don't mind. If, uh, yes, everyone over here, thank you. Could you. If you could stop eating dirt for just one minute. Um, we've, we've started putting a building together. And if everyone could join us, that would be lovely. Yes, we're going to recreate society as best we can. Thank you very much. It's wonderful. Um, and the greatest thing about the British accent is uh, speaking with a British accent always makes smarter th things sound dumber and dumber things sound smarter. So you can't go wrong, you know. So come on inside and uh, we promise only to eat one of you. That's where he's just going to eat one. But I think, I, I think ultimately the one, uh, the other accent you could possibly use is a Scottish accent. You could get away with a Scottish accent. The problem, you know, like you're living around, it's at the end of the world, you're running around, you start to build things back, building your own fucking Stonehenge, you know what I mean? Create a cult, something like that. Scottish accent's great, but you can't, really, but you can talk too fast and nobody can understand what the fuck you're saying. So you got to, you know, it won't work, it won't work. And I know this because I turn, it turns out I'm Scottish. I found out, has anybody done 23 and me? Anybody here done 20, yeah? Did you find a surprise in it? Was there a, oh shit, I am 100% Czechoslovakian. That didn't happen, you know? Shocking. Um, <laughs> anybody else do it? Did you do 23 or Ancestry, if you want to be accidentally Mormon? Um, don't they own it and they turn you Mormon if you join or whatever? But I, yeah, so I, I my middle name is McGee, M-A-G-E-E, -E, right? And it's, Oh, there you go. So Irish, and hey, no, a bit of Irish, yeah, M-A-G-E-E. -E. So we thought for the longest time we were Irish because the whole thing, you know, with the Irish accent, and that, that, that life is, you know, McGee was that family. But it turns out, if you, it's true. By the way, girls love a Irish accent. If you're, honestly, if you're trying to repopulate the world, the Brits will help you build it. The Irish will fuck the world back into con back into existence. Just walk around, ladies, how you doing? I'm just saying the world's gonna need more babies. So that's the fight it's gonna be. So, um, but we always thought we were Irish because of the McGee, and there is some Irish in there, certainly a good amount. English and Irish mixed together because it's a rapey bunch. Um, they took turns. Um, <laughs> was it our turn to rape you guys or do you? Are you gonna rape us? I, I, what year is this? Is it 1150? If it's 1150, it's your turn to rape us, I think, I mean, basically. And then in, in 1600, we'll fucking rape you and then we'll turn it around. Um, <laughs> but, with, uh, but, but it turns out McGee, my middle name, is, was actually McHugh, M-A-C-G-O-U-G-H, when my relatives came through Ellis Island and were like writing down those, but their accent was so fucking strong, they went, McGee! And they're like, that's no, McGee, right? That's uh, McGee! M-A-G-E-E. -E. No, it's, not, it's, not, it's just fucking go in, you know, so, which is awesome. So happy to find out that I was Scottish, that there was some Scottish in there. It's just, it's, it's, because, honest to God, if you're Scottish, there is a very strong chance that somewhere back in your family tree, at some point, there was a man <laughs> on a horse oh, no. riding back and forth in front of a bunch of other men on horses oh, going... Men, today we fight for our lands. And today we may die, but we die for our people. And one day we shall have freedom and real horses. You know, so. 
I know, it's a 50-50. 50% chance that you've got somebody like that. There's also a 50% chance that you have this guy. You fucking go ahead, I'm not fighting for this bullshit. Go ahead, I'll stay here in the fucking pub. The English are gonna take the fucking place over anyways. Who gives a shit? I'm drunk, I'm not too drunk anyways. Got a belly full of haggis, I can barely fucking stand. The gas it gives me. They should call it hot gas. Fucking hell. Um, I, will, I, I will say this is really fun to do. I, som I sometimes do it in line at Starbucks. <laughs> Waiting around. Can I get a uh, vanilla latte and uh, no. oats? Thanks. You guys are wonderful. Take care of yourselves. Take care of somebody else. Oh, bless you. Thank you. By the way, come back whenever I'm here. Uh, I make this shit up as I go along. So, <laughs> it's all, it's new as best I can. Every fucking time. And uh, <laughs> be careful out there. You're gonna be all right, I promise. See you. Give him some love right there.